Okay, in this video clip, uh, we will discuss how to apply the Turbinian uh, equivalent theorem uh, to uh, find the uh, to analyze the three-phase short circuit. Right. So you can see that the problem here is extracted from uh, a ref example nine. It's from example nine point one, chapter nine of a highly cited book. Uh, the version I'm using here is the first edition, right? So the problem states that the one-line diagram of a simple three-bus uh, power system is shown in the figure, right? This is the figure 9.1 is shown on the left side. Each generator is represented by an EMF behind the transient reactant. Okay, this is the no, uh, uh, the normal, um, the, you know, uh, 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 generator equivalent, right? All impedances are expressed in per unit based on a common base of 100 MVA and for simplicity resistance are neglected. The assumptions are made. Okay, these are the assumptions. So you can see that the first assumption states uh, there is no shunt uh, capacitance. So the shunt capacitance of, the, of each of the transmission line is neglected, right? Uh, for reali uh, realistic Right, real, realistic representation of the uh, transmission line, so the capacitance are uh, you know distributed on uh, both sides of the line. Right, this is the, normally we express this in terms of B over two on the on both sides of the line. So in this case, it is neglected. Moreover, the resistance of the line is neglected, and the system is considered uh, on no load. Okay, so this is quite a bit different from from the example we discussed in the previous uh, uh, um, example, right, where the uh, the motor is loaded. Okay, if you still uh, uh, don't know what I mean, right, you check uh, uh, on the list of the, the clips that I'm providing to you in this in this course. Okay, uh, the, the second assumption is that all the generators are running on uh, at their rated voltage and rated frequency with their EMS in phase. So the problem asks you to find the fault current, okay, at different locations, okay. Uh, we are, the assumption is that the, the fault just happened at different buses. We start at uh, the three cases. We have the case A, the bus just occur at, at uh, bus number three. For case B, the bus, the fault occur at bus number two, but of course, when we consider uh, uh, case B, there is no fault at case A, okay? It's like this, this is, this is the case B. And finally, the case A, the, the fault just happened at, uh, at bus number one. So at each case of the fault, right, we assume that the fault uh, is, is a balanced type or it is, it is symmetrical. Okay, this is uh, also a symmetrical fault, and with a fault impedance of uh, 0.16 per unit, right? So we we need to find the fault current, meaning that uh, if we have uh, consider the, uh, the, the the case A, right? This is the fault. You, you need to find what is the fault current for uh, at the bus three. And moreover, uh, you have to uh, find the bus voltages, the voltage of each of these three buses, right, during the fault, and the light current during the fault, right. Um, okay, let us uh, dive into so uh, into the solution. Okay, uh, for this clips, I will just uh, focus, right. I will just show the the solution of case A and case B only, so I, I just leave the uh, just leave the case uh, C for your own studies. Of course, you can uh, look uh, for the complete solution from that book. All right, uh, this is the scenario at uh, fault at bus A. You can see that uh, when you have the fault at bus A, the, this is shown, the equivalent circuit is shown on the left side. You could see that this is a normal operating condition Right. When there is a normal operating condition, we uh, do not connect the fault impedance to the bus number three. So once there is a fault happen at this bus, so it is modeled as uh, the switch, right, which is a normally open switch. When there is a fault occur, then uh, the switch just close, and then there is a short path, right, 
uh, to the ground, right? But in this case, it just uh, passed through the default impedance of uh, uh, with the reactance of 0.16 per unit, okay? But if the problem states that it is at both at fault, okay? What do we mean by both at fault? Means that uh, the ZF is just zero PU, okay? With a zero impedance. This is what we call uh, both at fault, okay? But in this case, with default impedance given, it is not uh, the, the both at fault. All right. The way we uh, analyze uh, this circuit is that you know you are trying to uh, find you know the fault current at this uh, uh, bus number three. So what we have to do here is that you know we don't at this point of time of the analysis, right? We we are not interested in what's going on behind the bus number three, right? We we are we are not interested in uh, this point onwards, okay? We, we are not interested uh, the point beyond the bus number three through the generators. So what we have to do here is that we 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 trying to you know model this uh, uh, thevenin uh, equivalent circuit uh, at the bus number three. So this this figure B is the uh, representation, right? If you look at the bus number three, you can see that the bus number three onward is modeled as the uh, uh, thevenin uh, circuit, right? When, you, when we talk about the Thevenin circuit, uh, let me recall you a little bit, right? The uh, Thevenin equivalent circuit is normally, you know, uh, a model as the the uh, voltage source, right? With the uh, source as uh, 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 Thevenin voltage and the uh, reactants. In this case, it's reactants, or if you have just DC circuit, you can just put uh, resistance. So this is the CTH or Thevenin uh, 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 impedance, right? Thevenin equivalence impedance. So this is uh, the equivalent circuit from uh, bus number three, right? This is the uh, Thevenin. Uh, when you look from right uh, bus number three equivalent at bus 3, okay? When you have the Thevenin equivalence at bus 3, then you represent the, all the sources as, a, as one voltage source. So in this case, you can see that uh, we express the, the, the source over here, VTH, and since you know we have just a single uh, voltage source, so we just deactivate right the the generator. So the generator here is connected to ground because you know there is a zero voltage, right? From from this point on, right? You just uh, if you want to just uh, uh, trying to find the CTH, right? We, the, the next step is that we we will find the CTH or, or for uh, Thevenin equivalence impedance, right? So you can see that you just uh, deactivate the source uh, from this point uh, three onwards, right? When you look inside the uh, point number three, so this is uh, represented by the zero voltage, so it is uh, short, circ uh, short circuit to the ground, right? That's why we have this uh, uh, the ground over here, right? We just right, and similarly, you know. For this particular generator, right, uh, when you deactivate the, the, the generation, you just uh, short circuit this to the ground because the voltage is essentially zero. Okay, let me set the voltage to be to be zero. Okay, is it okay? Uh, this is uh, once we have this, you know, you have a, a circuit like this, right, and you have the fault impedance, right. The CTH like this CTH, okay. Once you have the fault, then right, you just kick in the switch, and it is connected like this. So you had determined the fault current in this case at bus number three, right? So you can see that uh, the IF at bus number three, right? The fault current at bus number three is the uh, VTH in this case, right? Uh, it's just VTH divided by the sum of the CTH and the, the uh, fault impedance, okay? But in this case, uh, the VTH here, right, since we have made the assumption that the once, uh, I mean, before the, uh, the fault happened, uh, the system has no load. So there is no load connected to each of these bus, 
okay and the generators are just operate at the uh, rated capacity so it makes sense that you know at the rated capacity means that it is operating at the hundred percent of their capacity so uh, the condition uh, before the fault right the voltage uh, source or the internal emf of each of these buses you know it just operate at 1.0 pu right so is this this similarly this bus as well so it that's it it does make sense you see that uh, if this is 1.0 per unit and there is no no um, uh, load connected to one of these bus so it makes sense that the the voltage right or since uh, it makes sense that the voltage at all the buses right should be uh, equal to 1.0 per unit since there is no current flow right it makes sense so at the rated capacity and there is no load so there is no current flowing from bus number one to two bus bus number one to three and two to three since there is no 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 current flow and so you can uh, you know the, you can uh, conclude right somehow that the the voltage is going to be the same for all the buses so we can uh, make sense to every it it, it it is makes sense to uh you know uh, assume that the all the voltage voltages uh, at the time zero time zero here means that this is before the fault right the time zero is before the fault so we can assume that at this point of time right the cur uh, the voltage is uh one per unit which is 100 percent at the rate capacity okay so now you can see that you know uh, the I, uh, i3f or fall current at bus 3 is okay v3 at time 0 which is 1.0 per unit right divided by the cf plus uh, c33 this is the uh, thevenin right impedance right thevenin equivalence impedance looking at bus 3 okay this is a uh, terminate impedance when you look at bus number three now it is a question you know uh, how to 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 determine this uh, c33 so this just becomes uh, uh, the point of our interest right so this is the uh, how do we uh, reduce this network basically okay uh, the network in in in, in the green right you, we want to express this uh, this network in green that is how much c33 which is the cth okay the thevenin uh, 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 impedance okay when you look at this uh, thevenin impedance you can see that uh, you have this uh, topology this kind of topology in in the triangle like this Right, the connection is back to back from one to three, from three to two, and two to two to one. This is essentially this is delta, right? This is the this is delta connection. Okay, so uh, from this delta connection, you could uh, you know re, uh, you know you, you could transform the delta connection to y connection. In this case, as you can see here, the topology, the connection between amongst uh, one, two, three right the buses one two three it can be you know transformed into uh, the y connection you still remember how to how to determine the uh, equivalence right you, it's, it's it's quite a bit simple you know you can you you could uh, find the equivalent equivalence like this since uh, this j right the j uh, i mean the reactance of this is 0.8 and this is 0.4 okay so this uh, reactance between uh, these two reactances would becomes the multiplication right it is a multiplication of 0.8 times 0.4 and divided by the sum of all this so this is uh, 1.6 right so this would be 2 and the uh, i mean the result would be j02 right j.02 so you can, that's why you can see that this is the j.02 right this is the, the this is the result of this uh, you know the equivalence okay 
Now, uh, it's similarly, you know, it's uh, between 0.8 and 0.4 can be uh, uh, calculated from from in the same fashion as this one. So you can see that this is 0.2 also, right? And uh, the last one, right? The uh, uh, impedance between 0.4 and 0.4 that would become J of the multiplication between the two, right? Uh, multiple uh, multiplication between 0.4 and 0.4 divided by the sum of all three impedances which is 1.6 so in this case right uh, this is 4 and this is oh, 0.1 right this is 0.1 per unit which is here 0.1 right so you have transformed this uh, from delta to y connection uh, I mean the connection between uh, 1 2 3 right so that's why you have uh, arrived at this uh, uh, at this uh, uh, circuit. Okay. Now you can see that uh, you know we want to you still remember our goal is what our goal is. We want to uh, you know find the total equivalent set T H of all this bunch of reactances. Okay. How 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 would you achieve this one? By the way. Uh, you want to equivalence, right? You want to find the big bunch of, I mean, the the the, the big re uh, impedance of this, okay? Of course, when you want to find the equivalent impedance, that 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 means that you know you want to connect between bus three and the ground, right? Uh, the, and the ground. This is the ground, and you want to find the equivalence impedance, which is resulting in the same voltage, right? The same voltage voltage drop between this point and this point okay so this is the set th okay the equivalence uh, the impedance so you have to bear this this fact in mind that uh, in order to have the equivalence uh, impedance so it is if equivalent from the two buses right which would result in the same set of voltage and current meaning that you know the total current which flows out of these buses right it would be the same and the voltage right at this point and the voltage from this point these two points right uh, are the same right so bearing this in mind you can see that you know uh, with the connection to the ground and at the, if you consider at the point s here which is a common common point of the of the uh, star or y connection you can see that these two branches i mean the branch between s right through bus one and uh, and, and ends with the the ground this route okay and these two routes so these two these two routes are basically in parallel with the the, the ground right so these two are just parallel into this ground so you can see that you know the current flowing on this this branch is the same right the current flows in this branch is the same no matter how you know the the direction is is the same for example here you know you can see it's the same and the current flowing uh, through these two elements is the same okay so you can see that these two made i mean 0.2 and 0.2 are in series right and 0.4 and 0.2 on the right are in series as well so this would become uh, j.4 on the left right and this is uh, becomes the j.6 on the right okay this is the uh, you know how we look at this circuit right so you have basically you have uh, one impedance of the uh, reactance of you know uh, 0.4 per unit on the left and 0.6 per unit on the right so these two is connected between point s and the ground right it just like this case you know the point s you have the you know the uh, uh, 0.4 on the left right and you have 0.6 on the right and it is connected to the ground so this is just look like this one if you are not uh, if, you, if you don't see it very well so it is just like this so these two are connected with to share the same voltage so this is in parallel right so all these the, the, these two are in parallel so the equivalence of these two becomes you know 0. Uh, 0.4 times 0. 0.6 divided by uh, 
the divided by one, right? Divided by one. So point uh, four times six becomes uh, two, two twenty four, right? With the two decimal is you know that's why we have uh, zero point two four per unit, right? So this becomes uh, zero point two uh, point two four per unit. Sorry, this point two four per unit. Okay. And then this is uh, this is the point uh, uh, two four per unit up to point S right the ground up to point S here which is this one here okay now we want to find the uh, the terminal you know the equivalence impedance between point three to ground between point three to ground now you can see that uh, you know from three to ground this is at this point here these two points here right the total equivalence impedance is you know a point you know the sum of these two point zero, uh, 0 0.34 pu right now you that's why here from three to ground 0.34 this would become your set 33 okay set 33 or this is the set th basically this is set th right Okay, the, the, the double subscription set 33, uh, we will explain if we have time in, in, in other clips, right? This is the uh, driving point impedance, this is self impedance that uh, uh, looking at bus 3. Okay, so um, I, I will not just, you know, focus on this for the time being, you know, what do we mean by set 33? If you learn this from, you know, uh, any other course like net, network theory, Okay, uh, you would understand why it is written in terms of C33. Okay, okay. Uh, you just bear in mind that this is the Thevenin equivalence uh, when you look from bus, bus 3. Okay, so you can have this. Okay, uh, therefore, when you want to find the, you know, the fall current at bus 3, there wouldn't be any more question left to you to answer. Right, you just put uh, one point zero. Right, this will become one over point j point three four plus j of the uh, you know CF is just one point six. Right, this is intentionally made because you know this uh, these two would made up you know point five. Right, so one over zero point five is uh, two. Right, negative this would kind of come negative J2PU, right? That's why this is the two per unit, right? The, it, at the, at, uh, I mean, as conclusion, right? The, uh, the, the, imp the, the total fault current would be negative J2PU in this case, all right? This is the negative J2 in this case. This is to answer the question one, right? In the case of uh, bus A, Okay, but the question itself doesn't ask you just the fall current. Right? You can see that uh, this is just one part of the three, one of the three. Okay, so the problem asks you uh, what are the bus voltages during the fall. So bus voltages during the fall, right? Uh, as we discussed earlier, that the assumption, the, the assumption we made for this is that you know the system is is no load in during the pre-fall condition. Right. Soon after there is a uh, fall current, so it would disturb, you know, there's a short circuit, there's a current flow, so it would disturb the, 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 the operating condition. So it cannot, you know, it can no longer operate at one per unit for all these three buses. It, it, the, the voltage is, would be, wouldn't be the same, right? It used to be one, one per unit right before the, the fault, right? Once you have, that is a fall, it's just like you know you have a big bowl of water. You you have you know a bowl of water, and you to drop the the stone, right? Now when you drop the stone, means that during the uh, you know uh, the, the 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 dynamics of this, the the uh, the voltage or the the water level wouldn't be the same. Okay, it's a, it's the same uh, you know analogy. Okay. So once it's a fall, and also it's just like you know you introduce uh, some voltage source in this, so it's a, uh, it's uh, I mean the voltage is no longer uh, one per unit anymore for all these three buses. So the problem asks you, 
what are those uh, bus voltages you know during the fault okay so basically you know it's just like you have uh, you know the pre fault condition and you introduce the fault so when you introduce the fault it means that you you have uh, you know the the, the thevenin uh, equivalence right you have uh, put an additional voltage source so in this case you could uh, you know apply the superposition right the, uh, the 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 effects of the fault to the bus voltages can be you know defined by uh, the uh, i mean the superposition theorem okay when you change the voltage of course and uh, you change the current right there is a change in voltage so you have just find the the linear sum of that okay now uh, we have to analyze the the, the current uh, 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 the contribution of the fault current, you know, from the generator one and generator two, right? Um, you can see that the total fault current was uh, uh, calculated at, uh, you know, you have we have got uh, two per unit, right? Negative j two per unit. Okay, so you can see that there is no source of the of 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 the energy except you know the the generator one g one and the g two right and you have the uh, the fault introduced here and the current flow from negative j2 per unit just flow uh, at this bus right so the source of this uh, two per unit uh, current right would have to come from uh, the g1 and the g2 now we have to analyze you know the contribution of g1 and the contribution of g2 to this uh, two per unit fault right two per unit fault meaning that from this anal analysis right the current flowing right the fault current or the contribution of the fault current from g1 and the contribution from g2 the sum of these two must be exactly the same as uh, two per unit it will be add it will be add up to two per unit okay now we we can analyze right from this figure basically right you see from from the uh, the the star equivalence or the y equivalence uh, pro, uh, circuit, right? You see that uh, we have analyzed that the uh, I3 I of the fall at bus 3 is negative J2 PU, right? So this current has to come from on the, from the left root, right? From the left root here and from the right root here. And it has to go, you know, out of this bus with the negative J2. So the sum of these two has to be two, okay? So you can see that the current flowing from uh, to this bus is also, you know, since this is a series, so from this bus is also negative J two PU, right? If you look just at this part, right? If you look closely just this part, let me draw in this, uh, you know, uh, red box. If you read, see just red box, the negative J two right it's divided into two roots right which is the root number one and this is root number two right so this is essentially you know your current uh, division right from from in, in the two roots so you can see that uh, you know on the left root is from the generator g1 and from the left root comes from the generator g2 which is the the, the you know the energy source of these systems right now you can use the current division as follow you know the g1 uh, the contribution from g1 is from this ratio right the ratio of this would be from the uh, the right side of this two because this two is j 0.6 right the portion right is reverse you can see uh, the ig1 you have you have to use this uh, you know the j 0.6 divided by the sum the sum of this is essentially one because this is 0.4 on the left and 0.6 on the right this is one so this is uh, 60% basically you can see this is 60% because this is 0.6 divided by one right this is a 60% of two, of two right and of course this is negative j okay so you have negative j uh, uh, 1.2 okay 60 percent of uh, of the total right this would made up 60 percent and of course definitely the sum of these two must be 100 percent so the uh, contribution from g2 is 40 percent 
right? It's 40%. So you have seen that, you know, the, uh, the current flowing out of the generator one is, you know, uh, 1.2 and the generate from generator to is uh, 0.8 per unit, right? Now you can see, right, uh, how your contribution of this two generator would, would change, right? Uh, or, I mean, how this uh, fall current would change the voltage at, uh, or at all the buses. You can see that, you know, um, the delta V, right, the delta V1 is the, the change of uh, the bus voltage V1 due to the change of the current. Okay, the change of the current, uh, of the of the of the current of the fall current. Okay, now you could see that you know uh, the delta V one is what um, this the, the V one here when you measure the V one right the V one would uh, um, come from this you know this is the uh, due to the current flows from in this route which is minus J one point two. In this case, uh, minus J point eight PU. Now, the change of the voltage due to the change of the current. Initially, you know, as we discussed earlier, that the condition before fault is that there is no current flowing out of the generator, right? Once there is a fault here, the current just change uh, by negative J one point two PU. That would create the, uh, you know, the potential difference, right? that would create the potential difference here like this because the, 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 the voltage the drawing from source right to uh, source on this side this is generator and this is the load so the voltage is uh, J 1.2 right negative times uh, J 0.2 right this is the, the, the sign right you can see that this is the the voltage drop due to this current negative j 1.2 and right uh, since this is the reverse direction when we want to find the um, the v v1 right your v1 when you see the v1 when you measure the voltage you have to uh, you know you have to refer to 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 the reference so if you measure this v1 here means that this is positive on this side and negative on on the to the ground right but the voltage difference, right, due to the the, to, to the flow of this negative J one point two current would create a different different polarity, right? Different polarity. So that's why this is the negative sign over here, right? That's 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 why this is negative sign over here. Okay. So uh, all together, right? You you have the the, the change in the voltage of uh, uh, minus. Uh, you know, 0 0.24 per unit, right? So this minus sign would indicate that you know once you know there is a, a voltage, and I mean I mean once uh, there is a fall S bus three, right? There is fall S bus three. The voltage, uh, the initial voltage at bus one, which is assumed to be at the the rating capacity of 1.0 PU, right? has, uh, you know, will be reduced by 24%, okay? So, due to the, the current flow here, right, for, uh, it would create the, the voltage drop of minus, uh, you know, 0 0.24, right? The initial condition was one per unit. This is the, to, to create the, the drop of uh, 0.24 negative, right? So, the uh, after the fault, right, after the fault, the, cur uh, the voltage at bus 1 uh, will be reduced by 24% to uh, 76, 76, 76% or 0 0.76 PU, okay, 0.76 PU, okay, you can do the same thing with, you know, uh, the, 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 the generator 2, right, and the, the generator 3, Right, you can see that why is it not uh, a negative sign over here because you know it uh, as as bus three right as bus three uh, you uh, you see the the ground is is down 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 here right so the polarity of this V three is here and the the voltage the current is flowing in this direction from up to down right from the higher polarity. 
and the uh, lower polarity. So this is the delta V3, right? So the, your delta V3 and V3 are in the same uh, direction. So you don't need to, to put any negative, right? You don't, you don't need to reverse the, 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 the sign, right? So you, you just get, uh, you know, negatives, right? Uh, 0.68 per unit. Right. So it will uh, reduce the um, the voltage right by 68%. So initially the bus voltage here is 100%, so it's reduced by 68%. Uh, so it becomes uh, 32%. Okay, this is clear, right? So uh, when when you when you know the the voltage at uh, bus one, two, and three, now you can uh, find the uh, current flowing from each of these buses during the fault, right? This is the, the question um, um, question number three, right? Because the, the, the third question, the light current during the fault. When the light current during the fault, you can, you can see that, you know, you have to analyze from your original circuit, right? Now we see that during the fault, this happened when there's a fault here. So this is the, the direct connection Right, you have V one F, right? V two during the fall and V three during the fall, as uh, you know, uh, calculated in the previous slides, right? Um, now you want to see, right, the, how the current is flowing in this route one two, right? I one two during the fall. You want to see I one three during the fall. This is the line current during the fall. Okay. So now it's obvious, right? You know the voltages between uh, in, at any bus, right? In you know the current flowing from one to two is due to the the, the voltage difference between uh, bus one and bus two, right? So the so the I one two is the the voltage difference between one and two divided by C one two, which is the uh, impedance connected between uh, one bus one and bus two, which is J point eight. So you can, you know, uh, compute this, right, <coughs> to be uh, point one per unit, right? I one three. Now you do the same thing because you know the current flowing from one to three due to the voltage difference between one and three, right? The voltage different is V one minus V three divided by C one three, right? You can find the uh, the voltage to be negative J 1.1 and finally you know I 2 3 is still due to the voltage difference between 2 to 3 okay why do we assume in this way 1 to 2 1 to 3 2 to 3 of course it's, it's clear that you know uh, the current has to flow from 1 to 3 and from 2 to 3 right there is no way that the current would flow from 3 to 1 because the source is up there right the sources are up there not, not not down right now you can see that you can recheck your calculation right because the current flowing in in this network right you can see that this is like a transmission network okay the, the sum of the current in uh, this network would have to be the same as the fault current okay because you know this uh, the fault current if you remember that this is the fault that uh, current the current flowing through the ground over here is negative uh, 2 per unit, right? J2PU. The sum of this, right, the current flowing in this uh, has to be, you know, the same somehow, right? Is it, is it the same? Uh, you can see, um, not really, right? Because, uh, because of the flow, okay, it would go with this direction, 1 to 2, uh point one right and uh flow from one point one over here and two to three point nine and of course this is uh if you remember this is negative j it is here negative j uh, point one is here so right if you remember uh, from the our calculation one point two is over here right so it means that if you look from this case this is negative uh, J 1.2 when it comes to to the 1.2 right 1.2 going into this so it go out uh, to this route by 0.1 and go down this by 1.1 so uh, you can see that 
in this case the sum of this current right is according to the kcl you can see 1.1 plus uh, 0.9 is 2 per unit okay this is the analysis of the uh, you know the the the, the fault at bus a so similarly you know uh, now we can uh, we, we can go this uh, pretty fast right uh, with the the fault at bus B. If you fault at bus B, you you would see that you just model this fault occurrence due uh, as the as the switch right over here. And now <clears throat> the process is the same as the the previous case. Is that you know you want to uh, represent uh, the 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 circuit right at the point of the the fault to be uh, the thevenin equivalence right uh, to 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 find the thevenin equivalence at the point of the fault. Right. If you look closely to to this point, right, uh, you can see that uh, uh, from the point two, right, we want to we, we have to, you know, uh, find the equivalence with uh, with respect to the with respect to the ground. We have to determine the safety edge from bus two with respect to ground. Now, from bus two with respect to ground, the ground is up here, right? The grounds are up here. And uh, you can see that from root number two with the ground, there are, there are uh, you know, a number of uh, reactances uh, in between, right? But uh, if you see uh, closely, right, you can see that uh, uh, these two roots, since it's not connected to the ground, this is the series part, right? The series path, right? Now, this is becomes J.8, J.8 in parallel to J.8, this is J.8. Uh, 0.4, right? This is 0.4, okay? And with respect to the ground, you can see that we look at bus number two, at bus number two and the ground. You know, you have a uh, 0.4 here, right? And you have 0.4 and 0.2 over here. Now you can see that uh, these two, right? These two are in series, right? These two are in series, right? And to be in series, right, you can uh, reduce this into J.6 PU, right, J.6, 0.6 and 0.4. Now you see at bus 2, with respect to ground, right, you have 2 to ground, you have 0.4 on one side and you have 0.6 on the other side, right. Similarly, as the case of bus A, you have point, this is 0.6 and 0.4. 0.6 and 0.4 are connected in parallel right so the equivalence would be point you know uh, six times point four right divided by one so this is point it's the same point two four pu right this is uh, the the equivalence impedance is is point two four which is here okay then it you use the same thing right uh, v20 which is the uh, pre fall condition at the bus 2 is 1 per unit due to the assumption that you know uh, um, the, the system operates at the nominal condition or at the rated condition and there is no load so it, it makes sense to, to 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 assume that the voltage is is, is 1 per unit or 100% right and now you could also see that you know uh, it's the same function, right? Uh, C22 is a set thevenin. Uh, when you look into the bus two, right, you have a uh, 0.24 and you have the uh, uh, fault impedance of 0.616. So 0.24 and 0.16 that would make up to 0.4, right? J0.4, and you have 1.1.0 uh, uh, on at, uh, you know at at the top. Right now, you you would find the you know the I two, which is a fault current at uh, bus number two to negative J two point five. Okay, negative to J two point five. Now you can find the contribution of uh, uh, the each of the generator to to fault current. Right now you could see that this is the also the the current division at bus number two because you know you have the generator two over here. And you have generator one right here. So the the fault current is negative J two point five, right? So you have uh, the current division on the two routes, on the left and on the right, right? So uh, this is the current division from the left. You have higher uh, in, uh, reactances. You have, that's why you have uh, the lower current, right? 
So you have a negative J1 on the left and you have negative J1.5 on the right, right? Because the on the right root you have the uh, the, the smaller reactants. Okay. Similarly, you could also you know find the the change of the voltage due to the change in the line current, right? So you you, you can check the polarity as well, right? You see that the current it's flowing in this direction, right? plus minus so this is plus minus delta v1 delta v1 i mean here it is due to the voltage drop across this route due to the chain i mean the, the flows of the line right and but you know the, with, with the v1 right uh, you are your measuring direction of your v1 is opposite it's opposite so that's why the the negative sign is there right negative sign is there Okay, now you have to see uh, quite a little bit closely, right? Uh, the, 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 the polarity, right? You have to check the polarity quite closely. Okay, and that's in this case here, I, I will leave this for, for, you, for your own studies, right? If you have any question, please, you know, uh, direct me the, 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 the questions and I will try to, to answer for you. For those who didn't attend this course as well, you know, if you have any any questions right uh, you can drop your question in in the the, the, the youtube message box and I, I will try to answer all the questions to you guys you know not just you know the, those who are in in this in, in thailand right for the, for the sake of you know the, the, the benefit for all the audiences right so that's how you you, you find, you know, we follow the same kind of uh, uh, analysis, right? You could, once you know the V1, V2, V3, right? You could also find the, 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 the light current, uh, the current flowing through these lines uh, due, during the fault. Okay, <clears throat> this is, I think this is quite clear to you, right? <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, uh, let, let us check whether the, the calculation is correct or not, right? You have uh, I12 roughly, right? Negative 0.5 over here, 1.3. Let, 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 let's just see S bus 2 because the fault is S bus 2. Now uh, we have to check the KVL, right? At bus 2, right? From, 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 from 1 to 2 is uh, okay. From 3 to 2, from 3 to 2 is negative J0.5, right? And you remember this is negative J0.5, right? Uh, out of J0.5, you have the uh, current flowing into the bus by 0 0.5, 0 0.5. This would make up one per unit, right? So you need to the current uh, flowing into the bus by negative J1.5 to be correct, right? So you can check whether the IG2, right? This is the IG2 because this is the generator from from I mean, this is the current flowing from the generator. So this calculation would be uh, correct, right? You, this is how we we uh, recheck your, your 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 calculation. Okay, this is all. I think this is all for uh, this example. In the next video clip, I will explain to you how to you know uh, develop the. A um, uh, 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 systematic way of analyzing uh, uh, three-phase fault in uh, uh, by using thevenin. Okay, we will see you in next video clips. Thank you.